All right, check this out. This is pretty cool. Dynamic SQL queries using cell values as parameters within Excel. So as you can see here, uh, I have a start and end date, and then I have all these different product categories. So as you can see, we're changing these different parameters, and the user is able to push refresh data. And from there, you can essentially run custom queries through Excel. All right, so I switched from 2022 to 2023. And then let's see, category five, hit refresh data. And as you can see, category five, 2023. So essentially here, as you can see, we have a start and end date. So what we're doing is we're saying, uh, select, the X, select these columns from wherever the table they're from, where the start date is between X and Y. So these are two parameters we have here. And then also we have this product category, one through five. So this is kind of an example to show you that you can kind of do any dynamic SQL um, through the use of how we set this up. So what we're actually really doing here is we're changing out these parameters through a cell value. So this start date, this end date, and then this category. So as we check off the boxes, what it's doing is it's adding dynamically whatever categories we're selecting, and then it's running that. So one upside to this is instead of selecting all of the data, um, which might take a little bit longer in some cases with the database size, um, you don't have to pull in all the data. What you can do is you can just dynamically enter your parameters that you need and hit run. And then it just simply just pulls that data for you. So let's walk through how we set this up from scratch. So I'm opening up a fresh worksheet here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, connect to the SQL and pull this data in. So we're going to go to data tab and then we'll say get data from database from SQL server. And then we're going to hop back to Management Studio to get the server name, database name, and the query itself. And just copy the server right from there. And then once again, we need the database. And then hit this drop down here with our SQL statement. We'll plop in our query that we want to run. And what I'll suggest you do here is anytime you're setting this up initially, just input some dummy values here. And then we're going to be creating all these parameters and we'll update this in the future. So just copy the whole query with your parameters built in. So that way we can just easily change the value itself. Uh, so we'll hit OK there. And then we'll, we're just going to load it for now. All right, so. We have our data table here. And what we'll first do is we'll put in our start our end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of build all this out just right above here. Um, in the previous example, I have most of this stuff kind of behind the scenes in this parameter sheet. So obviously you can kind of clean it up by hiding the data in hidden sheets. So essentially what we're gonna to need to do is create a data connection to each of these different input values. So we're gonna have one for the start date, one for the end date, and then we're gonna build a formula to automatically get whatever the um, selected product categories are, one through five, from those checkboxes. We're gonna essentially automatically create a string that selects the value itself with, and separates it with a comma. So I'll show you kind of an example of that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table and just say equals that's that value. Control T to enter table. And then once again, this is gonna be the end date. Create a connection here to this end date value. Control T to create the, create the table. So let's first start with the start and end date. So what we'll do here is we're just going to simply select the cell cell value or the table, go to the data tab, and then select from table slash range. All right, so as you can see here, it loaded in as a table like we would expect. Going to do a little cleanup here first. I'm just going to go to this query and call it uh, data. 
and then table two this is our start date so I will put in start date this is gonna turn into our start start date parameter so what we need to first do is we need to uh, clean this up here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and we only want um, the date value itself so I'm going to select the column and I'm gonna say uh, transform to date only that's all we need okay so now that we have just the date itself what we're gonna do is we want to convert this to a text because we're inputting this SQL query as a text a whole full text string so I'm just gonna change the data type here to text and then right click and drill down drilling down into the individual value itself so as you can see now we have the start date so let's do the same thing real quick for the end date. I'm just gonna close out of here and say keep changes. That's automatically going to build out a table for you. You can essentially just hide this. You won't need to be using that. Um, as you can see now, we're gonna go over to this end date. So this is referencing the cell that the user's inputting. So once again, come over here, go to from table slash range to pull it into Power Query. All right, so let's rip through those steps again real quick. First things first, transform to date only. Convert to text. Drill down. Very simple. And then switch that to end date. And now we have two parameters. So now we're going to go back to our data here. And this is our original query. So. As you can see, if you look at this formula bar, it's a little dirty. As you can see here, we could just input these values. Um, but one thing, just to mention what you can do to kind of clean this up a little bit, you can just select this gear setting for the source. And we can just copy this query. This isn't a necessary step, but this is just uh, something that I'll do sometimes. So pretty much what we're doing is we're just going between the two double quotes within this query. So as you can see, it's typically all the way at the very end. Well, it is always at the very end. And then, um, so as you can see now, it's in the same format from SSMS. Not that that's necessary, but might be helpful. All right, so now we're going to be changing out these static values for the actual parameters themselves. So to do this, what we're going to do is input double quotes here and then also two ampersands um, to essentially join different text strings. So now what we can do is we can start typing and you'll see that our start date parameter pops up. And then we're just going to do the same over here. Double quote, ampersand, end date. And now we have those two in there. All right, so the dates are working here. So we're gonna close out of this and now we're gonna set up those different check boxes. All right, as you can see, it's spit out the end date table as well. We can hide that. All right, so now just to test once again, let's just change the date to uh, 2024. So 1, 1, 2024. And we'll just hit uh, refresh all here test everything out all right so as you can see that all loaded up so that's working so now let's input those checkboxes all right go to the insert tab and select checkbox first off I'm gonna grab five cells one two three four five All right, so now what we need to do is we need to define these different checkboxes so that we can reference them. So if we right click on this, select define name, and say this is box one, and subsequently we do this for the other ones, define name, say two, all right. All right, so now we have those five defined checkboxes. Now what we'll do is we're gonna we need to see if they're either checked yes or no. So what we're going to do is we're going to first pull in the value itself. So now that we define those, we can reference them. So equals two, so on, equals three. Equal 
times four and five. And then now, as you can see, if we check this, it says true or false. So now, depending on whatever your um, values are themselves within Excel or within SQL, you might have to create some kind of lookup or something. In this example, it's very simple. I just have a category column, one through five. So we're just going to put in a little formula here. We'll say if this equals uh, true, if this equals true, comma, then return your value. So in this case, it's just one for me, else blank. Try that down. We're gonna have to change out. Uh, that's gonna be two, three, it's gonna be four, and five. So this would be whatever the actual value is that you would be entering over here within this. Uh, where statement within this in statement. So as you can see in this example, it is just as simple as an integer, but for your query, you might be putting in you know, a specific category value or something, some kind of text string or whatever. All right, so now we have all of these. So now what we need to do is we want to create one cell that we can load into Power Query that takes all of these and combines them with a comma, how you would typically do within um, SQL. All right, so what we'll do is we'll say equals, and we're gonna use the text join uh, function here. All right, so as you can see, it starts out with delimiter. So in this case, we want to double quote. You put in your double quotes, and then whatever you put in between your double quotes is gonna be the delimiter. So in this case, a comma. And then we're gonna say ignore empty cells. That's the reason why we put a blank in there in the if statement and then comma what do you want to join so it's going to be these five cells so two four five so as you can see here they are and now we're gonna to have to load this into power query so we'll just say prod for product control T to insert a table and then load that data into Power Query. All right, so I'm looking at this value and it looks kind of odd, it says 245. So it looks like Power Query automatically applied a step. I wanna get rid of that. Go back to the original of just 245 here. So once again, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna drill down. It's already a text value, so we don't have to do anything there. And then we're just gonna rename this as prod uh, filter, product filter product category filter. So now we're gonna go back up to data. I'm gonna go back into this query here and we're gonna change this. And now we're gonna input the dynamic value. Oops, just added a, uh... so once again, double quotes, ampersands. All right, so then product filter. That's gonna, what that's gonna do is it's gonna put in two comma three comma four or whatever um, so that's all we need to do there hit enter and we'll close out of here keep all those keep all that and that's pretty much it so now as you can see once again it's gonna kick out that product filter you can once again hide that if you'd like so now as you can see we kind of have some stuff scattered around here but you get the picture here so let's open this up. Let's say 1, 1, 2022 through 2024. And then let's say this is gonna be category one only. And we'll do a quick refresh, test this out. All right, so as you can see now, we have category one with products with the year 22, 23, and 24. So now let's say 2024 only category five only, refresh, 
as you can see 2024 category 5 let's also add category 2 all right so there you go there you have it so as you can see you can get pretty creative with this essentially all you really need to do is just make sure the sql syntax that you're pushing through as a parameter is valid and i mean if it is then it'll run so hopefully this video helps thanks for watching like and follow thanks